All right, our top story at this moment, India's effort to seek UN Security Council sanctions against Hezbollah Mujahideen chief Sayyid Salahuddin is facing a roadblock from China, which has threatened to place a technical hold preventing Salahuddin's listing. Now, India is currently in the process of seeking the support of UNSC's 15 members before formally introducing an application to list terror mastermind Sayyid Salahuddin under Resolution 1267, following which member countries will be required to enforce travel bans and freeze his assets, who has been operating out of his Pakistan-occupied Kashmir base. But sources in Beijing tell Mail Today, our sister concern, that China is considering placing a technical hold on the application, seeking more information to prove Salahuddin's links to Al-Qaeda. Just days after Prime Minister Narendra Modi was warmly welcomed in Xi'an by Chinese President Xi Jinping, the bonhomie, it appears, is yet to translate on to the negotiating tables of the UN, while Beijing may yet reconsider and support India's move. Delhi is concerned that its efforts will be derailed by opposition from China, a veto-wielding permanent member that has placed technical holds on several Indian requests to blacklist terror chiefs in the past. When asked about the Salahuddin case, the Chinese Foreign Ministry told uh, Mail Today that uh, this issue is related to internal discussions of UNSC 1267 committee. For more on this story, let's uh, now cut across live to Beijing, where we are joined in by India today's Anant Krishnan. Morning, Anant. Uh, can you take us through what really is China's position, or what is China's position uh, likely to be? Uh, the challenge ahead now for India is it's still uh, in the process of uh, canvassing support from the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, including China, and the ten other uh, non-permanent members. Now, uh, what China has done in the past and what China appears to have conveyed uh, as uh, this process is ongoing before the UN Security Council 1267 committee meets is that um, if it does not have more information, it would uh, place a technical hold. Uh, in the past, China has done this uh, most recently when India sought uh, to list three terror chiefs of the Jamaat ud dawa and the lashkar e taiba And what China essentially did in that situation was delay the request, uh, saying uh, it would place technical hold for lack of information. And finally, it required uh, lobbying from the United States and more information provided from the United States for China to change its stand. Well, privately, what officials believe is, of course, this is being done at the behest of Pakistan, which has rejected suggestions that, uh, the, that the chief of the Hizb Mujahideen has uh, links to al-Qaeda, which, of course, is a requirement to be listed under 1267. Mm -hmm. So while China is officially saying it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, its actions are prompted by a lack of information, well, I think most people are aware that it's the Pakistani hand uh, behind this. Now, Anand, for the benefit of our viewers, I mean, it's interesting that you mentioned 1267, uh, under which India is actually seeking the ban. What really is this section uh, that India actually wants to invoke at the UNSC, which they feel at this moment that China will not back them? Uh, Sankit, the, the thing about 1267 is a uh, prerequisite is uh, to be listed under this resolution is uh, a link to Al-Qaeda. Uh, why 1267 is important is if uh, a terrorist leader is listed and sanctioned under 1267, then every member state will be obliged to enforce uh, travel bans mm -hmm. as well as to freeze all of his assets. So these are pretty important steps So if 1267 is passed. Uh, however, the caveat is that in the past, when the terror chiefs of Jamaat ud dawa for instance, were listed under 1267, I think uh, you and I are both aware that they still operate with impunity in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So the question of how these are enforced is a, is a different one. But as far as member states are concerned, it will send us on strong signal that they will have to enforce both arms embargoes, travel bans, as well as freezing of all assets. Now, Anand, uh, final question before I let you go. Uh, in the past, as you mentioned, that there are, have been several occasions where China has not completely agreed or, or perhaps has held that veto power in the UNSC as far as India's demands uh, on crackdown is concerned. Can you take us through some of those uh, demands that India made uh, to which China, you know, turned the other way? Sanjay, the most uh, significant of, of these recent cases was after the Mumbai attacks in 2008. Uh, prior to that, in fact, as well, India had uh, tried to list uh, three leaders 
of the Lashkari Taiba and its sister organization, the Jamaat ud Dawa. And uh, frankly, what we saw were delaying tactics uh, from China saying that they would place technical holds for lack of information. And uh, there were, in fact, several uh, revealing cables that came out from the State Department, the courtesy of WikiLeaks, uh, which detailed how the Chinese foreign ministry was telling the United States that it would not be prepared to play ball. And finally, it took several meetings and uh, persuasion from the United States, according to these WikiLeaks cables, uh, and more information provided to China, which uh, frankly made it hard for China to keep postponing and to resist. So it seems that uh, it's a more, it seems to be more than anything a delaying tactic, and uh, and we'll have to see what India can do to avoid that uh, this time around. Anand Krishnan, many thanks for joining us from Beijing for more on this story. It'll be interesting to see what China's official position is actually going to be on this particular request.